Uh, is this working? It is working. Good. Welcome to Astronomy Live. Today, this morning, we're going to be attempting to track a military satellite which reportedly exploded earlier, just a few days ago. Now, the military and the government have released the orbital elements of the debris from this explosion of a Defense Meteorological Satellite Program satellite, uh, but they have not released the orbital elements of the original satellite. And that's pretty normal. Uh, it's classified. Uh, what you're looking at here is the start of NEB. We're about to start tracking the satellite's predicted position right now using the original satellite's orbital elements. Now, how do I have those? Well, amateurs track classified satellites all the time, including this one. So, the saddle, or the uh, telescope's locked on. Oh, we've got something here. Just to the right, I think that's something. It's either a hot pixel or it's something. I think it's, oh, it's definitely, there it is. There it is. In the words of Khan, not so wounded as we were first led to believe. So much the better. Sorry, I'm a total Star Trek geek. Uh huh. If you see that dot, I'm going to try to move it. Oh, there it is, closer to the center of the view. Beautiful. Uh huh. That star like object right in the center, that is whatever remains of that satellite, the satellite that supposedly exploded. What I'm really curious to see is whether it's really out of control. Has it lost its attitude control? And we'll know because if it has, it should be tumbling and the brightness of the satellite should vary up and down. It will, of course, get brighter as it gets higher in the sky. It's just rising now. But you see there how it suddenly got brighter? Now it looks like it's fading. Yeah, it's fading a little bit. We try to increase the exposure. Oh, darn you, Google. I forgot you mirror all of my text on my end. I, everything's backwards for me. I keep forgetting about that little catch. Ah, there we go. All right. So, yes, amateurs track classified satellites and publish the elements, even though they're supposed to be secret. We don't care. So today on Astronomy Live, we're tracking a classified satellite that uh, I'm not even supposed to know about, or at least I'm not supposed to know where where it is, where to look for it. But I do. And sure enough, the telescope finds it right away. So this is NORAD ID number uh, 23533, which is supposed to be the origin of this debris uh, that is now being tracked. Supposedly the satellite had a little oopsie and exploded for reasons unclear at the moment, but uh, some are speculating that it's, it was hydrazine. Now, hydrazine is common fuel used by satellites, but it's very toxic, very corrosive. Some are speculating that one of the tanks exploded or something because it is like 20 years old and was only designed to last for about four years. Oh, look at that flash. Do you see that? Sudden brightness increase. That indicates uh, the sun's just glinting off of it there. If it does that again, it is most certainly tumbling. If it doesn't do that again, it's not necessarily tumbling. Some satellites will experience an individual flash like that. Uh, we call it satellite flares on a pass. There it is again. It's tumbling. Confirmed. It is out of control. It is tumbling. So what's happening there is as it rotates in space, it will catch the sun just right 
and produce that flash of what we call satellite flare, where it's reflecting a lot of sunlight right back to the telescope. And it did it more than once. So that indicates that that space of time between one flash to the next is the actual rotation period of the satellite. There it is again. Oh, it just went by the bright star of Vega. Yep, it's confirmed. The satellite is tumbling out of control. Rotational period, I'll have to time it in the recorded video. Some number of seconds, but it is rotating at a pretty good clip then. And there it goes again. Not quite as big a flare that time, but uh, it may be changing, ang it is changing angles now. It's reaching the peak of the pass, the highest point in the sky it will reach. And uh, as the angle of the satellite relative to the sun changes as it passes through the sky, the satellite flares can decrease in magnitude and even stop altogether. But what we saw there were at least uh, three or four flashes of the satellite indicating that it is tumbling in space. There it is again, there's a little flash. Oh, my computer hiccuped there. So what's happening here is my computer is actually sending the coordinates of the satellite to the telescope directly and telling the telescope where to point many, many times a second. And that's how it's tracking it. And if the computer hiccuped, it actually loses the tracking, it stops tracking the satellite. The, the telescope's dumb, it doesn't know where to find the satellite, but the computer does, and so it just commands the telescope. This is uh, tracking using Brent Beauchart's satellite tracker software. Uh, which he, Brent himself, stopped uh, developing the software some time ago. He, uh, he reached the end of life of software on this. I mean, he doesn't support it anymore officially. But uh, a group of amateurs have taken up the project. And I think they've started uh, working on the source code that they got from him goes again flashing a little bit. I have to check into that. I uh, received a few emails in the last few weeks about that and I'm curious to see what features they're planning on adding to it. But uh, the satellite does work, or this, uh, this program does work exceptionally well for tracking satellites with classic LX200s. So you can see the stars are streaking by. The satellite is, like I said, it's just, it looks like a star. I'm not trying to resolve the satellite's shape here. What I'm trying to do is just see how the magnitude varies over time. You can see how it increases in brightness there briefly and then goes back down. And that's the key I was looking for. That is the signature of a tumbling satellite. So what we know now today is that there is something left of the original satellite. It did not completely vaporize when it exploded, but it is tumbling at a good rate. Every few seconds we see a flash. And so that means it's uh, rotating at several, probably several degrees per second in space. And when it hits just the right angle on each rotation, it reflects more sunlight back towards me, and you see that, that characteristic satellite flare. Well, now the satellite is fading out. Oh, and there it comes back again. But it is getting lower in the sky now. It's already past the peak of the pass. And normally the satellite's supposed to be uh, about magnitude 5. I'm using my Samsung camera here, which is what I usually use for planetary observing and also satellite tracking. But it's not the best for photometry, measuring the brightness of stars and objects, uh, because of the way it handles the images. It's, it's just a modified uh, security camera, essentially. But it has an excellent onboard processor to handle, um, handle the images and, and really bring out uh, maximum detail in terms of sharpness, which is uh, ideal for planets and the moon. But it also has the capability of doing long exposures for tracking dimmer satellites like this as well. But I wouldn't try to measure uh, the magnitude. It's hard to say what the magnitude of that was. I couldn't see it by eye, but it is twilight here, and it's not a dark sky site. This location's uh, fairly bright, so I can't really give you an estimate on the brightness, but it's normally just barely visible by eye, but really only from dark sky locations. There's another nice satellite flare. So there you have it, folks. That is DMSP. Uh, I forget which one this was.
one of those DMSP satellites, 23, what was the, uh, let me pull up that NORAD number again, 23533 is the NORAD number on this. I want to thank, I'm sure he's not watching, but I want to thank Mike McCants because uh, he keeps the, uh, keeps the file going of classified satellites tracked by amateur astronomers. He keeps updating that file on a regular basis and makes it possible to do stuff like this. Very nice variations of brightness there. I love how now you can really see how it gets really dim to the point of you almost can't see it anymore, and then suddenly it'll flare up in brightness. So, again, that's because it is indeed tumbling in space, but it did not completely explode. It may have experienced a attitude malfunction, and it uh, may have experienced some sort of small explosion that knocked off pieces, but most of it, I would say, is still there. which is not what you would get from reading most of the media stories about this. They make it sound like the whole thing's just gone and now it's just debris. It's not true. I'm not losing sight of it here, but I expect it will probably eh, flare it up a little bit there for a moment. We may be done with the real major flares now. It is getting really low in the sky. It's going to hit the trees soon. So yeah, just a quick webcast this morning before dawn of uh, this satellite. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, that's all for the today, but uh, thanks for watching and clear skies, folks.